Anderson? Mrs. Smallwood? He's dead. Drowned in the bath. Mr. Henderson? Yeah. Yeah, and there's no phone. Have you got a phone I could use to call the police? Yes, of course. Come along in. And the housekeeper. What's her name? Smallwood. She's not there either. No one is Mrs. Smallwood's afternoon off. And nothing would give me greater pleasure. But I am afraid a journey of that length for the reunion would be out of the question for me. Kindest regards, Percy Whitehead. That's a very nice letter, sir. Uh, you might add major in brackets. A fine bunch of men they were, Mrs. Warren. Sometimes I feel it was worth the loss of my sight to have known them, fought with them. And now I really must be giving. Mrs. Warren, you know how deeply I appreciate your coming here on your afternoons off. Only too glad to do it, Major. Reading to me, writing my letters. I enjoy it. You'll miss your news broadcast. Hmm? Uh, a few minutes yet. Mrs. Warren, I've tried other housekeepers, but none of them have the patience or understanding. Frankly, my... Daughter's a bit tired of coming in to look after me. I was wondering, Mrs. Warren... Now, if... you know I have another position, Major. Yes, I know. And I suppose it isn't really fair to try to lure you away. But I'd pay you two pounds a week more than whatever you get now. Not exactly a poor man. Well, I'll have to think about it, Major. Does it make such a difference to my life? Do you know, Mrs. Warren, I've even thought of taking a cruise on a boat if I could find the right companion. A cruise, sir? I know it sounds odd, but for a blind man, the smell, the sound of different places is almost like seeing them. No, I meant a, a cruise costs a lot of money. That is my concern, of course. It's none of my business, sir, but I can't help wondering why you have bars on all your windows. Well, you see, I'm an old man, alone most of the time. It's merely a precaution. Very wise, sir. Goodbye, sir. You will think it over? Yes, I promise. And you won't forget to lock the door, will you, Mrs. Warren? No, I won't forget. That ends our afternoon program, Music from the Continent. Good afternoon, Mrs. Warren. Good afternoon, Mr. Uh, Teller. No, there's nothing for the Major this afternoon, oh. today. news, I'm afraid. You had a heart attack. Oh, no. 
Uh, this is Detective Superintendent War, Mrs. Smallwood. But he was fine when I went out, just fine. Well, it happens this way sometimes. Have you got any relatives alive? Yes, Sister Brighton. I've got her address. Oh, good God, Mr. Anderson. Who found him? Electrician working in the house. Ralph Maddicott. The way he was laying there under the water. His eyes staring. Ralph, he was an old man. We've all got to go sometime. Why did I have to find him? Coppers all over the place asking questions. What was I doing there? Who was I? Did you tell them? No. Oh, maybe you should have. Della, why should I? I had every right to be there, didn't I? Of course. It's usually best to tell the truth. Oh, Della, I couldn't. The only person I can be completely honest with is you. I know that, Ralph. And it means a lot to me. In fact, it's why I married you. If this Dr. Wren signed Henderson's death certificate, why order a post-mortem? Well, the ambulance boys noticed something I missed. What? A few odd little bruises on his shoulders. Just what do you mean by odd little bruises? Well, like maybe somebody shoved him down under the water and uh, held him there. In which case your post-mortem will reveal death by drowning, won't it? It does, sir. That's why I'm here. Well, why didn't you say so at first? Well, I'm sorry, sir. Next of kin's sister, Jean Henderson Spencer of Brighton. Yes, she arrived this morning. Talk to her? Mm-hmm. Going straight back there now. Yeah, well, I'll come with you. I've got a call to make a division. Anyway, I'm always interested in Spencer's from Brighton. Mm. Oh, by the way, sir, um, could I take a minute to check up in records on this electrician, Ralph Maricott? Well, why didn't you do that at first? Well, I have only just got here, sir. Any news about Nate, Dempster? Not a thing. It took me three years to put Nate behind bars. He escapes in the laundry van. It's a nice, clean way to do it. That sort of remark can break a man back to a beat. Yes, sir. I'll check up on a Ralph Maricott. What's his address? Uh, five Wilson Court. Let me know. Yes, sir. You're not seriously suggesting my brother was murdered? We're not sure. We're looking for a motive. Well, I don't know what it could be, sir. He kept himself to himself, hardly ever went out. Did your brother have any money, Miss Henderson? Oh, I think so. He had enough when he retired. Hardly spent anything. He's probably still got most of it. Did he have a bank account? I don't know, sir. Well, how do he pay you? Cash, sir, every Friday. Keep any cash around the house? No, sir. Well, I don't know. I mean, that's really not my business, is it, sir? No, no, but uh, it may be ours. Well, thank you, ladies. I'll just take a look around the house, if you don't mind. Of course. Help yourself. Check up on his bank accounts, if any. Well, you reckon he kept cash in the house, then, sir? A lot of old people do, don't they? The builders know it. Yeah. You can't find any bank accounts, have the place turned over, top to bottom. Right, sir. David, it's you. Hello, Prue. He's, uh, he's right behind me. Oh, okay. Bye-bye. Have a good time. Thank you. Hello, David. Hello. You're early. George isn't home yet. Hope you're hungry. Ravenous. How are you, Kate? You look marvellous. Thank you. Go in and make yourself at home. I'll be with you in a second. Thank you. Oh, hello, Matthew. Oh, hi, David. What brings you here? Well, I was invited for dinner, if you don't mind. No date tonight? Well, as a matter of fact, I have, yes, after the last show at the Embassy Club. What's she like? Well, she's, uh, she's got taste, she likes good food, good music. Me? She's a very <laughs> intelligent girl. I just don't know how you do it. You know, I had another uh, fight with Marion tonight. She says she never wants to see me again. Matthew, you're not handling her right. What is the right way, David? First thing is to uh, ignore them. Ignore them? That's right. Make them come to you. <laughs> but how? A studied indifference. For instance, when you ask for a date, you want it for that night. Now there's two weeks ahead stuff. Real casual. That's right, real casual. Now, if they say they're too busy, you say, all right, uh, another time maybe. Don't forget the maybe. That frightens them. Then hang up quick. I will. From now on, I'm going to be a different man as far as women are concerned. 
Good luck. Oh, hi, Dad. Hello, Sam. Hello, George. Hi. David. Do you mind a little business for a moment? No, sure. That uh, electrician, Ralph Maricott, his real name is Johnny Fox. Johnny Fox? He's been inside a few times, hasn't he? Breaking and entering. That's him. Have you seen war? Mm-hmm. Not even one bank account in Henderson's name. Well, you'd better speak to Johnny Fox, haven't you? All right, I'll drop it on him tonight. But so... not before dinner. Half past ten. Who on earth can that be? Well, there's only one way to find out. Maricard? Yes. I'm Chief Inspector Keen, Scotland Yard. Is your husband in? Yes. Uh, come in. Thank you. Ralph, this gentleman is... Yes, I heard. Are you Ralph Maricard? That's right. Uh, sit down. I'd uh, like to speak to you alone. I've got nothing to hide from my wife. Mrs. Maricard, would you mind? Maybe you'd better tell her. It's uh, about the death of Mr. Henderson. Well, all I did was find the body. You ever heard of a man called Johnny Fox? I thought you'd be bound to dig that up. Well, I didn't know whether your wife knew. That's why I wanted to talk to you alone. She knows. Anyway, thanks for the consideration. We have nothing on you, Johnny. Ralph. Ralph. Just checking. Now, do you know if Henderson kept any money in the house? Well, I hardly ever spoke to the man. I was just there putting in new wiring. Uh -huh. How long had you been working on it? About a week. So you had to inspect some of the walls, dig them out in a couple of places? Lift up one or two floorboards? Well, I had to, to inspect the cables. So if there was any money hidden in the house, you'd have a pretty good chance of finding it. Are you accusing me? No, no, no. Just asking. Look, I never found nothing. You can check on it if you like. I haven't got 20 pounds of my name. Ask Della. Ever since I came out of jail, I've been going straight. Honest. And you've got anything to worry about, have you? Why are you asking me all these questions? I ain't done nothing wrong. We think Henderson may have been murdered. You, you don't think I had anything to do with it? You were in the house. You've got no alibi. I swear to you, I had nothing to do with it. Look, you do believe me, don't you? Let's uh, hate to see a man fall back. Good night, Ralph. What did he want? Well, oh, they're trying to make out the old boy was knocked off for his money. And I've got no alibi, so they... Now, listen. Look, since you came out, you've gone absolutely straight. You know it, and I know it. There's nothing to be afraid of. Look, Della, you get a record, it's like having a disease. And in the end, it must kill you. Not us. Look, we'll make it. Oh, I wish I could get away. Somewhere where they've never heard of Johnny Fox. Like Australia. Australia? How do we get there? Do you know how much it costs to get to Australia? Tell her the other night I met a bloke who's cleaning up on the dogs. He gets some great tips. No. But darling, he turned 20 pounds into 200 no, in one Ralph, night. you promised. Look, that's how it started the last time. Gambling. You swore to me then never again. All right. I promise. Word of honor. We practically demolished the Henderson house, but we found a little cubby hole underneath the floorboard. Anything else? Five pound note, stuck in a crack, whoever cleaned it out missed it. Any electrical cables in the cubby hole? As a matter of fact, there was. David, I want a tale on Ralph Manicott and Martha Smallwood. That'll be watched 24 hours a day.
to win uh, number three dog. You were seen betting it. Well, there's no crime in that, is there? No, and you're not being charged. The electrician's trade's that good. Maybe you'd like to sign me in as an apprentice. All right, Mr. Keene, I'll have to admit it. The other night I told you a little lie. Nothing fascinates me more than a little lie. What was it? When I said I hadn't more than 20 pounds. I've got a thousand stashed away. Have you now? Well... Well, a couple of months ago, I started going back to the tracks. I haven't told the wife because she's dead set against gambling, but I had a winning streak. I couldn't go wrong. You sure you didn't find this thousand pounds under a floorboard at the Henderson's place? Honest, Mr. Keene, it's winnings. Look, you can check on it if you like. I always bet at the same window. The cashier will remember me. His name's Bill. Well, for your sake, I hope he does. All right, you can go. You try and leave town, you'll be arrested so fast you won't know what hit you. I won't. I promise. What do you think? I believe him. But check it out. Anything new on the Smallwood woman? No. Barton's telling her. slip in a church? Well, I wasn't ten seconds behind her, sir, but the church was full, the service was about to start, and, well, I... I, I lost her. I'm sorry, sir. You should be. You think she gave you the slip deliberately? I don't know, sir. Well, if she was innocent, she'd have gone back to the Henderson house, wouldn't she? I couldn't say, sir. You couldn't say. All right, that's all. Well, obviously, this isn't one of our most efficient weeks. Oh, she might have gone on a visit, gone to stay with a friend or something. Yeah, or killed old man Henderson and made a complete getaway. Gentlemen. If you have any lack of success to report, save it till later. For me, there's no such word as failure. Surprise me. I showed Ralph Maricott's picture to the cashier at the track. He confirms that Maricott won over a thousand pounds in the last two months. Which leaves us with Martha Smallwood. Who at present is lost in the sea of humanity. Lost? Yes, Barton fumbled. Look, David, I'm putting Cranston on the Dempster case. Now, you go after Martha Smallwood. Find out everything you can about her, where she was born, every step she's taken since she learned to walk. Mrs. Warren. Right here, sir. Here's two weeks' wages in advance, plus some shopping money. Oh, thank you very much, sir. I'll keep a strict account of all the bills. <laughs> that won't be necessary. If I can't trust you, I can't trust anybody. Nice of you to say so, sir. Come here. There's a good dog. <laughs> I must admit, though, there was a time when I trusted too much. A partner in my business, he almost ruined me. You mean he stole, sir? Yes, he cooked the books. I couldn't read the figures. I had to take his word for it. The only way I like to deal with money now is cash. I suppose you're right, sir. 
Yes, I can tell the difference between a pound note and a fiver. Just like that. Can you really, mm. sir? Well, now I'm off to meet Geoffrey in the park. Very good, sir, and your lunch will be ready when you get back. Percy, here I am. Ah, <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Sit down. Huh? Now then, sit. Sit. Now, you're quite comfy. Yes, thanks. Lovely morning. Yes, real nip in the air. Yeah, it's a bit uh, fresher, isn't it? By the way, how are you and that Mrs. Warren getting along? Jeffrey, she's a marvelous woman. And wait until you've tasted her homemade scones. Aha! Darling, aren't you ready? No. It isn't? How did you get on with the police? Oh, all right. It was just routine. They know I didn't do it, so there's nothing to worry about, just like you said. I had an interesting phone call this morning. Oh? From some man called Bill. Bill? The cashier at the White City dog track. Seems the police wanted to talk to him. I asked him some questions, showed him your picture. Actually, he was curious. In fact, he was very worried. He, he wondered what sort of trouble you were in. No, Della, don't get upset. A thousand pounds in the last two months. Well, not exactly. You, you see, I... For pity's sake, don't hedge. You've been gambling all along, haven't you? Yes. And these night jobs twice a week. You were at the track, weren't you? Yeah. And this anniversary present, the track bought that. Well, where else do you think I get £120 for a watch? You liar! Yeah. Take it easy, you'll break it. Look, I had a treble up on the local book, so I had to push my luck. So I dumped it on the dogs. You promised me you'd never gamble again. Never. I couldn't help it. You can't be honest with anybody, can you? Not even with me. Twice when you were inside, I waited, worked, saved money, wrote to you every single day. You promised me then you'd never gamble again. I would leave me alone. Tell her you, you wouldn't walk out on me. Where would I go? Well, we could make a fresh start. A thousand pounds is a lot of money. Australia. Just what would be so different in Australia? Promise. You can do what you like. Stay out. Come home. Suit yourself. Because I tell you something. I just don't give a damn. Mum? We're in here. Have you got the weaver's number? I, I want to call Susan tonight, see if she's busy. You're joking. It's Saturday night. I thought you were going out with Marion. <sighs> so did I. What happened? I took David Keane's advice. What advice? About how to treat girls. David said you've, you've got to play it cool. You know, be casual. Call them at the last minute. So? Well, I, I just called Marion for tonight. At seven o'clock? You asked Marion out on a Saturday night? Yeah. What did she say? She told me to drop dead. David, no doubt, would say that was an excellent sign that things were going swimmingly. Well, something sure went wrong. Somewhere. Somewhere? Why do you think David Keene is still a bachelor? Your father died two years ago? Twenty-six months, to be exact. Of a heart attack? In the bath, yes. In the bath? Did he live alone? Yes, he insisted on it. He's terribly independent. He had a housekeeper, though. What was her name? Oh, uh, Green, I think. Yes, that's right, Mrs. Green. Can you describe her? And the description fits Martha Smallwood. Close enough. Three old men in the past five years all die of apparently natural causes. All of a housekeeper roughly fits Martha's description. How do you intend to follow it up? Exhumation of the three bodies in question. With general sunny periods over London, East Anglia, and the Midlands. The high pressure area over southeast England. Now I'm going to meet Geoffrey. Have a nice time, sir. Oh, Mrs. Warren, 
Give me those travel folders, will you? I want Jeffrey to see them. Thanks. Come on. See you at lunchtime. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Now listen, Percy. After three sun-drenched days and moonlit nights in Puerta de la Cruz, a leisurely sail home. How much is that? 262 pounds each. Percy, you're not really going to take this woman with you, are you? Why not? But she's just a domestic. She takes care of me. But you really don't know anything about her. Oh, yes, I do. I can tell by her voice. She's kind and good and completely trustworthy. I'd have a rest before lunch. Oh, dear. Oh, what's the matter? Well, I've just torn your bed apart. Whatever for? You changed the sheets this morning. No, they weren't ironed properly, Major. I mean, laundress these days, you can't trust them. Mrs. Warren, you needn't have trouble. Somebody's got to look after you, sir. <laughs> Even the dead can't sleep peacefully these days. Sorry, Superintendent, but it may save somebody's life. I knew old Charlie personally. The records say he died of gastroenteritis. But what if he'd been murdered? And hang his killer myself. Old Charlie's death certificate said gastroenteritis. But the lab boys said they found traces of arsenic in his head. That's where it often ends up for some reason. As I've been in a lab before. But Henderson was drowned in the bathtub. Now, he had a heart attack. But, uh, oddly enough, he hadn't taken the pills he was supposed to. What is that? I'm convinced that the housekeeper in each case was our Mrs. Smallwood. Every one of those old men thought she was an absolute angel. And she sent them to heaven. Get all of war, he seems, Smallwood. Then ask Marshall to come to my office with his bag of tricks, all right? Anything else? No, but I think you've stumbled on something. Okay, thanks. Did you hear that? Hear what? Stumbled. For 24 hours I've been working, traveling, digging up graves, talking to the next of kin, gouging out my brains, and all he says is, stumble. You think a bit off the cheeks? Yeah, they are a bit fleshy. I'm one of the few men you can ask for a pound of flesh and get it. On or off. Uh, how about the hair? That's about right, I'd say. What do you think, Wall? Bit low on the forehead. Bit low on the forehead. Nobody will ever let me make a beautiful woman. Maybe you don't ask properly. Well, she may well have disguised herself by now. I'd say that's it. Wouldn't you, Wall? Yes, I would. Right, David, lay on some heavy publicity. TV, radio, newspapers. We'll see if we can make a surface. Beauty, I'm going on a long trip. 
Mrs. Warren's coming with me. Will you miss me? Mrs. Warren. Good evening, sir. You've been such a time, I was worried. Well, I'm sorry, Major. I've had a lot of shopping. Never mind. I've decided about the cruise. We're going. That's wonderful, sir. Aren't you pleased? Oh, yes, Major. Delighted. When do you think we'd be leaving? Next week, if I can get the bookings. This is the BBC Home Service. Before the news, we have a police announcement. Scotland Yard are anxious to interview a woman named Martha Smallwood, who is hoped may be able to help them with their inquiries into the death of... What's happened? Oh, Major, I'm so sorry. I've broken it. My wireless? Yes, sir, I leant against the table and it slipped, sir. Oh, Major, I do apologize. I'll have it mended tomorrow. I'm so sorry. Never mind, Mrs. Warren. Accidents happen. But I feel so badly. Never mind. You can read the news to me tonight. Yes, of course. Though there's nothing in the paper, sir. Mr. Wilson gets tough. Bread's going up Hakeney. Widespread fog over southern England threatened. Well, you can't say the public isn't responding. No, so far, 1,027 letters. Yes, so 50% of them deliberately trying to get someone else into trouble. And the other 25% from pure cranks. Well, no, mind you. Another month and you'll be retired. Oh, boy, I can hardly wait. Any luck? Uh, not so far, sir, no. You're from 10,000 personal calls by police all over the country. Well, if at first you don't succeed, you're better next time. Or else. Thanks. We're interviewing all the elderly gentlemen of the neighborhood, sir. So I wonder if you wouldn't mind telling me if you've engaged a housekeeper in the past few weeks. No, sir. No. Very well, sir. Thank you very much. Oh, beauty. That'll be Mrs. Warren. Good dog. Mrs. Warren, is my wireless ready? No, sir, they can't repair it. They say it's too old. Oh, dear. <clears throat> I'm so bored. Jeffrey's visiting his daughter for a week in Edinburgh. Without my wireless... I... Oh, look, Mrs. Warren, Excuse I wonder... Excuse me, Major. There's a policeman down the lane. He seems to be making inquiries. Really? I wonder what about. Well, sir, there's something I've never told you. Oh? It's about my husband. Oh, I thought you were separated. Yes, three years ago, sir. He used to beat me up so terribly. You mean he actually struck you? Oh, yes, sir, quite often. And the worst of it is, Major, he's always trying to find me. Do you know what he does? Goes to the police and reports me as a missing person. Tells them I've lost my mind and things like that. Good heavens. As I left my last position two weeks ago. So, if this constable should ask, could you say that I've been with you six months, sir? I mean, that would rule me out straight away, wouldn't it? My dear, of course I can do that. And would you say my name was Mrs. French? Don't you worry about a thing. Good afternoon, sir. I'm Police Constable Farley. What can I do for you, Constable? We're interviewing all the elderly gentlemen in the neighborhood, sir. So I wonder if you'd mind telling me if you've engaged a housekeeper within the past two weeks. No, indeed. Mrs. Uh, French here has been with me. Uh, how long is it? Oh, I see it was about six months, sir. Yes, that's it. Uh, what's all this about, officer? The police are looking for our Mrs. Smallwood, sir. I don't suppose you happen to know of any gentleman in the area who has engaged a housekeeper recently? No, I'm sorry I don't. No. Well, thank you very much, sir. 
Sorry to have disturbed you. Oh, that's quite all right. Oh, thank you so much, sir. That's terribly kind of you. You're safe here, don't worry. Beauty, come on. Now, about my wireless. What exactly did they say? It's too old, sir. They can't repair it. Can't get the spare parts. Oh, I am sorry. I know how you miss it. Yes, especially with Geoffrey being away. Uh, Mrs. Warren, would you mind another trip into town? Not at all, sir. You could buy me another. Nothing too expensive, mind. No, of course not. Uh, wait here a moment. Twenty pounds. Oh, I'm sure that'll be more than enough, Major. Something the same size as the old one that'll fit on that table. You leave it to me, Major. Good afternoon, Mrs. Warren. Good afternoon, Mr. Teller. Any letters for the Major? Yes, two. I'll drop them in the box if you don't mind. And who do you think's going to read them to him? Yeah, it looks like Nate Dempster's out of the country. Yeah, all right, get on to Interpol. Yeah, thanks. Yes, David. What do you think of this? From the Weybridge police summary of their house-to-house -house canvas. A Major Percy Whitehead told a police constable Farley that his housekeeper, Mrs. French, had been with him for six months. And? In response to the appeal in the papers, Whitehead's postman, Archibald Teller, writes in that Major Whitehead took on a housekeeper named Warren two weeks ago. I see that. You better get Police Constable Farley up here. He can play games with Marsham's identikit. That's a good lead, David. Well, it's nothing. It's just something I uh, stumbled across. Cheer up, my beauty. Jeffrey will be back on Monday. You miss him too, don't you? Oh, cantankerous old fool. Well, come on, let's go home. Oh, there must be some more somewhere. Grey hair, you said? Rather soft waves. Yes, sir. It's awful close, sir. Do you think you could possibly give us some horn rim glasses, sir? Yes, of course. Have a look at these. Those. Well, Farley? Yes, sir. I think that's her.
Have a nice walk, Major. Very nice, thanks. I miss old Geoffrey. Well, he'll be back on Monday. Mrs. Warren, I'd like a nice cup of tea. Well, I'll go and get it for you, Major. Now then, beauty, I'll take your harness off. Pick up Superintendent Moore. Yeah, it's on our way. invested either. And bars on all the windows. Do you think? I don't know what that's for. for title people. I was 15 when his lordship put me in the family way, and then he threw me out. Rolling in money he was, but I couldn't get a penny out of him. My baby was born in a workhouse. And after what I went through, she only lived a couple of days, so I swore to myself, I, I swore if I could get my hands on some money, I'd live like a lady myself. Now, come on, Major. Tell me where you keep it. Never. Oh, the door's locked, Major. And if I have to, I'll keep you here for a month. No food, no water. You, you couldn't do it. Oh, couldn't I? You don't know me, Major. Ordinarily, I'd have spent months here chatting you up, reading to you. And I'd have found it myself. But the police are on to me now. And do you know why? Well, stealing, I guess. Murder. And if I have to, I'll kill you. Now tell me where you keep it, because I want that money. <gasps> the odds are against you, Major. <laughs> You'll stay there till you rot! I want that money. Mrs. Warren, you're forgetting something. Beauty, help! Get her, Beauty! Get her! <laughs> Beauty attacked a man once who tried to pick my pockets. The man almost died. Call her off. I want that door. Call her off. Get 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 her off.
मुझे क्या था break down the door. How bad is it? It's his shoulder. I think he'll be all right. All right, Mrs. Smallwood, it's all over. Mm, all I wanted was a little, like a lady for a few years. Yes. and Ralph Marricot, the fellow that found old man Henderson in the bathtub. Yeah, what about him? He's been picked up for breaking and entering. Report says something about him splitting up from his wife. Well, I'm surprised. I don't think he'd slip back. You suppose if we hadn't questioned him, pulled him in, that... we'd no other choice? No, I suppose not. Had to be done. <laughs> 